Hi everyone! In today's video, I would like to talk about nutrition and to prevent Alzheimer's disease. I'm Raluca, and if you haven't watched my previous videos, I am passionate about sharing information and creating awareness that Alzheimer's disease is essentially a preventable disease. Three years ago, I lost my wonderful mother to Alzheimer's and before her passing, I spent nearly 10 years relentlessly researching this absolutely devastating disease in the hope that we could offer her something more than the current Alzheimer's medication, which unfortunately is not very effective. In my research, the best and the major revelation that I had is that Alzheimer's is preventable, but we need to intervene early on because the changes in the brain, the accumulation of the beta amyloid starts 30 to 40 years before the first symptoms of cognitive decline become apparent and an official Alzheimer's diagnosis is made. Prevention is based uh, on four pillars, nutrition, physical exercise, proper sleep hygiene and uh, stress management. And although uh, this does seem to be the equivalent of leading a healthy life, we live very busy, sometimes chaotic lives, and we don't necessarily make a priority out of any of, the, of these four pillars. Today, I would like to talk about the foods that we should be including in our diet in order to prevent Alzheimer's. In a previous videos, I talked about the types of foods which are extremely toxic and harmful for the brain and which, if consumed regularly, uh, increase our risk for Alzheimer's. Uh, we talked about sugar, first of all, and bad carbohydrates, about saturated and trans fats, about processed foods, which are absolute poison for the brain, and about foods which are contaminated with heavy metals, methyl mercury being particularly dangerous for the brain and a major risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Today, in a brighter note, we talk about the foods that we should be incorporating in our diet. And my principle is that um, these foods need to be very accessible and uh, compatible with any diet, either carnivore, vegan, ketogenic, whatever diet you're on, these are foods that we can very, very easily incorporate. And also they are very accessible. And by accessible, I mean that we can get them uh, from uh, the nearest supermarket. In essence, I have identified in my research five categories of foods that are extremely, extremely beneficial in Alzheimer's prevention. The first category is anti-inflammatory foods because the common denominator of almost all the risk factors for Alzheimer's is chronic neuroinflammation. The brains of Alzheimer's patients are chronically inflamed, so it makes a lot of sense to introduce anti-inflammatory foods in our diet. The second category is extremely important, antioxidants. Antioxidants are absolutely essential for our mitochondria to protect itself from oxidative damage. And in Alzheimer's pathology, oxidative damage which plays a very important role in accelerating the destruction of neurons and synapses and, in essence, the acceleration of cognitive decline. The third category is good fats, the monounsaturated, the polyunsaturated, and I would also like to discuss why fats are so important for the brain. The fourth category, I called it microbiome-friendly, and by microbiome-friendly, I am referring to prebiotic, probiotic, and fiber. And the last category, uh, food supplements. I have to say that I'm not necessarily a huge fan of food supplements. I believe they are meant to supplement the diet. We should not be relying on them as some sort of magic bullets in uh, the prevention of Alzheimer's as well as of any other disease. So let's take them one by one anti-inflammatory. I have come up with a list, you can see it here, of 10 foods, again, which are very accessible and which have scientifically proven anti-inflammatory uh, benefits. And I will start with the first one, which is turmeric, the golden Indian spice, which stubbornly stains everything in our kitchen, including our fingers. And uh, the magic about turmeric is that it contains uh, the active substance curcumin. Um, but there are some things that we need to know about turmeric. The first one is that curcumin is not very bioavailable. It's not easily absorbed into uh, the blood. And this is why many manufacturers of curcumin supplements are adding either pepper or a form of oil, for example, coconut oil to increase its bioavailability. The other thing that we need to know about curcumin, and for me was kind of surprising, is dosage. I came across this study 
study, which clearly showed that we need uh, 3.6 grams of curcumin on a daily basis in order to really benefit from its antioxidants, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits. And if we think that the average supplement has in maybe 400 or 500 milligrams, well, we need quite a lot of supplements of curcumin daily in order to really uh, benefit from uh, its properties. One other thing that I would like to add before my mother's passing, I came across this video on YouTube. A gentleman diagnosed with Alzheimer's uh, was praising curcumin and was attributing to uh, curcumin supplements that he was taking the fact that he was keeping Alzheimer's under control. And in fact, he was doing quite well. And as you can imagine, the first thing that I did was to uh, get a lot of curcumin supplements for my mother. Unfortunately, they did not um, help her in any way. We did not see any improvements in slowing down cognitive decline. And this, and this is a reminder of something that I understood in my research. Uh, every Alzheimer's patient is absolutely unique and has a very specific particular set of contributing factors which need to be addressed as per, per a customized plan. So if supplementation with curcumin worked very well for that gentleman, it doesn't automatically mean that it will work for any Alzheimer's patient. Just something to bear in mind. The second food item is extra virgin olive oil. It is very well known. What I would like to add is that I came across this study where participants were uh, given 50 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil daily for 12 months and they noticed a significant reduction of inflammatory markers such as the C-reactive protein. But again, dosage uh, is important. 50 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil was the amount given to uh, those participants in the study. The third item on my list is green tea. It's an amazing antioxidant, an amazing anti-inflammatory. The fourth one is broccoli, the kids' favorite <laughs> vegetable. It's rich in sulforaphane, an active substance which is anti-inflammatory and sometimes it's also used as an accessory in cancer treatments. Uh, the fifth item is uh, berries, are berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, any type of, of berries. Uh, the sixth one, grapes. Uh, the seventh one, avocado. This is my favorite fruit, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. It's rich in vitamin A, in potassium, in monounsaturated uh, oils, and it's a great anti-inflammatory. Uh, the eighth one, uh, tomatoes. Uh, the ninth one, bell pepper or chili pepper. And the tenth one, fatty fish, because fatty fish is so rich in omega-3. And speaking of fish, I would like to, to reiterate something that I spoke about in previous videos, uh, the fact that we need to consume fish from the SMASH group. Uh, the SMASH group comes from salmon, mackerel, nut king, anchovies, sardines and herring. And why the SMASH group is so important? It has the lowest contamination with heavy metals, methyl mercury in particular, and it is extremely rich in omega-3. Uh, that being said, we can move to the second category, antioxidants. This is an incredibly important uh, food category because antioxidants are absolutely crucial for protecting our brains. As you know, antioxidants are those micronutrients found in plant leaves, in fruit, uh, in, uh, in certain seeds, and they protect the plant's chloroplast from the damaging effects of the sun. And quite interestingly, they do the same for our mitochondria. Mitochondria. In fact, consuming antioxidants triggers a process called mitochondria uncoupling. It may sound a bit funny, but I assure you it's not related to the dating world, it is as scientific as it gets. And in very, very simple uh, and non-technical terms, it means that the mitochondria is triggered to release part of its energy load and to replicate into more mitochondria to bear the remaining load. And this is the way in which our mitochondria is protecting itself from the damage of uh, free radicals. And for brain cells, this is absolutely crucial because oxidative damage plays a crucial role in the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we know that antioxidants are found in abundance in fruits and veggies and nuts and oils. What I would like to add is that saffron is truly miraculous. Saffron, the precious golden spice. I came across this formidable study where Alzheimer's patients were given saffron, 30 milligrams of saffron. And doctors noted that this administration of saffron was six to seven times more effective in clearing the beta amyloid plaques than the drug Aricept. 
you may know this drug. It's based on the active substance Donepezil, and it's an authorized drug for the treatment of Alzheimer's. So something without any side effects like saffron is more effective than an authorized drug. This is very, very interesting. And uh, in fact, I am taking a saffron supplement and I can really, really see the difference. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of wood supplements, but saffron is something that I truly take on a regular basis because I noted significant improvements in terms of memory and concentration. It's a very, very powerful antioxidant. And now let's move to the third category on our list, good fats. And the discussion about good fats can be very long as far as I'm concerned, because in my research, I really went down the rabbit hole trying to find out if the ketogenic diet is the best in preventing Alzheimer's. I know that it is used by functional doctors to treat Alzheimer's, but to cut a very long story short, it is not adequate as a long-term diet in the prevention of Alzheimer's. Why? Because our brain requires glucose. Glucose is the optimal adequate fuel for the brain. Even when we are in a state of ketosis, the brain can only use 70% um, of, the, of the ketones as energy. It still requires 30% to come from glucose. Another fascinating thing is the role of fat, of good fats for the brain. Uh, the, the fat in our brain is completely different from the rest of the, of the fat which is stored on our bodies, which is deposit fat, and it is stored in order to be used as energy later on. The fat in the brain is found in the composition of the membrane which surrounds the axons. The membrane is called myelin and this fat is composed actually of fatty acids, omega-3 um, fatty acids and its role is to ensure that impulses travel between neurons at a very very high speed. It is called a structural fat so it's not deposit fat, it is not meant to be used as energy for the brain, it is structural fat found in the composition of this membrane called myelin. As you know, good fats come in two sizes, let's say, or forms, polyunsaturated and uh, monounsaturated. I know that there was a lot of discussion at some point about coconut oil and uh, this lady, I believe her name is Mary Newport. Uh, she also has a TED talk and she talks about coconut oil as part of the treatment that she gave to her husband who suffered from Alzheimer's. And I consulted uh, all the studies that were performed as regards coconut oil Unfortunately, the studies did not seem to confirm that it can be used in the treatment of Alzheimer's. It is good for the brain because it can put us in a state of, uh, of ketosis, but there is no convincing uh, evidence that coconut oil is beneficial as part of uh, an Alzheimer's uh, treatment. Uh, you know, the best polyunsaturated oil uh, is probably um, uh, all, the, all the oils which contain uh, omega-3. And here I would like to mention that caviar and salmon rose have the richest content of omega-3. There are also vegetable sources like linseed oil, flaxseed, uh, chia seeds, uh, spirulina. But uh, the best source DHA of omega-3 comes from uh, the smash group. Salmon. Uh, mackerel, nut king, anchovies, sardines, and herring. And now let's talk about microbiome friendly. Uh, by now, I think that uh, there is a lot of information online that uh, our gut is basically the, the second brain and there is a continuous uh, communication between our brain and uh, the gut and uh, the health of the gut, a balanced gut is absolutely essential for uh, our mental health. Uh, what really preoccupied me was uh, the connection between uh, certain uh, conditions in the gut, for example, uh, a chronic infection with H. pylori, the bacteria, and Alzheimer's uh, disease. I do believe that uh, my mother's um, infection, chronic infection with H. with H. pylori, was a major contributing factor to her developing Alzheimer's disease, and this was confirmed by the studies that I consulted. And it looks like H. pylori does two very damaging things in our gut. The first one is that it increases the permeability of uh, the gut lining. Uh, and the second one is that it releases some very toxic byproducts. And when those byproducts are leaked, 
into the bloodstream and they reach the brain, they cause uh, neuroinflammation. And now there is sufficient and credible evidence to regard an infection with H. pylori as a major risk factor for Alzheimer's. How can we keep our gut healthy? By eating prebiotics. Uh, prebiotics are rich in a type of carbohydrate, oligosaccharides, and these oligosaccharides, they are not digested in the small intestine, they pass through the long intestine where they feed the good bacteria in our gut. Examples of prebiotic foods, cauliflower, uh, broccoli, onion, cabbage, I believe almonds or uh, cashews, there are lots of very accessible foods which are uh, rich in prebiotic. Uh, probiotic, for example, sauerkraut uh, or uh, certain Korean um, products like tempeh or kimchi, um, they are um, actually increasing the number of good bacteria in our gut and also fiber that we know is uh, so uh, so important. I try to include uh, prebiotic and probiotic as often as possible in my meals. For example, I absolutely love kimchi, that uh, beautiful Korean product. And now we can talk about food supplements. As I mentioned, I'm not a fan of food supplements because I don't believe in shortcuts. We need to focus on what we eat on a daily basis because preventing a disease like Alzheimer's or any other disease is about uh, healthy habits that can be sustained on the long run. And uh, just as a parenthesis, I do believe that worrying in a constructive way about Alzheimer's is even more relevant and important than worrying about our re retirement fund because um, Alzheimer's is that kind of terrifying disease which steals absolutely everything that makes us human, not only our physical ability, abilities or intellectual abilities, but our very identity, our history, our memories with our loved ones. And we, we cannot possibly enjoy our retirement, travel the world, spend time with our families and our loved ones, uh, if we are not healthy. And this is something that we have to be preoccupied with uh, well in advance. Coming back to food supplements, what we need to know about them is that they have a lower absorption rate than nutrition. I believe that in the US, the average absorption rate of food supplements is somewhere near 50%, which is quite low compared to food. And also they are not as uh, available as um, food products because food supplements they need to be digested broken down into smaller molecules and in this process sometimes their property their properties are lost. Also, food supplements are not legally regulated in the same manner as uh, drugs and uh, there are no legal requirements as regards quality and purity. This is why food manufacturers are setting their own quality standards and sometimes we cannot really uh, check them. There is no monitoring of uh, adverse effects uh, and also sometimes we don't have clear information about the interaction between food supplements and uh, certain medication. This being said, based on my research, I do acknowledge the importance of essential vitamins for the brain, like the B vitamins, B12, B9, uh, B6, B1. Uh, also vitamin D is absolutely essential for preventing Alzheimer's, vitamin E, and also magnesium. Uh, there are some very interesting plants and also mushrooms with, which have in certain studies, both on human and animals, showed some promising benefits in uh, preventing and also treating uh, Alzheimer's, for example, slowing down cognitive decline. And I would mention here lion's mane, which is a mushroom, uh, and plants like Bacopa monieri, um, gotu cola, uh, and uh, cat's claw. Uh, again, I'm not very um, optimistic in this respect. I do believe that Alzheimer's is such a multifactorial disease and nutrition is an important pillar and food supplements need to be seen as, let's say, the smallest part um, of this uh, pillar. Uh, again, these are not magic bullets. We can take certain supplements, vitamin B, like I I'm taking saffron or vitamin D, but um, uh, our efforts need to be focused on nutrition, on developing healthy daily uh, habits. This is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you found it useful. If you have uh, any comments, I would love to hear them. I'll see you in the next video.